So we talked about scope one, scope two, scope three, and now we're gonna talk about scope four. We talked about some metrics, but I'm really curious, what does scope four mean for you? And how do you approach that responsibility level of sort of picking and choosing the right components in your ecosystem to make sure that you are properly impacting not just the environment, but also your tenants and everybody else? I'm so happy that we've um, coined this phrase scope four because it's so, it's so meaningful. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is our goal is to change the narrative in the industry, to change the behaviors in the industry. So without understanding what you're doing and what decisions you're making to offset adding carbon to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. it's impossible to really put context around the inventories that we're collecting for scopes one, two, and three. So like as an example, like, I, like earlier we talked about you know, the roofing system. Yeah, yeah. Knowing that it's a certain amount of carbon footprint per square meter is one thing. Understanding that that product selection is superior over other product selections is a whole nother thing, right? So knowing that you're making good decisions. And the way we look at this at Compass is we, you know, we, we kind of wrap it around four categories because you know, we are into designing, delivering, and operating facilities. Mm -hmm. So the four categories that naturally fit for scopes one, two, and three, and four are product selection, design decisions, means and methods, and use of technology. And what we've done is we've developed a library card system that shows each one of these initiatives that we have, that we've deployed, and the holistic benefits around them, the top benefits in a very you know, whole life cycle approach. So it talks about the longevity of the, and the sustainability of the materials. It talks about you know, the ways in which we can offset carbon by reducing cement, by reducing the heat transfer that comes into our buildings, and so on and so forth. I love that definition. Honestly, Nancy, I think that's one of my favorites now because what you're saying is put a conscious process of thought into everything you do when you build these pieces of critical infrastructure. So your roofing example is actually quite spot on. Just because this roof might have a smaller carbon footprint, how long does it last you? You know, does it last you two years, you know, 10 years, 20 years? If it's a lower carbon footprint, but it only lasts you for 10 and you got to replace it, yeah. whoa, time out a second, what's the impact on that? So right. you take that method and process approach to everything that you build, this inventory process, that's... Yeah. We like to look at it like in a very holistic way, like because we are we own these assets in all perpetuity, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that these assets are going to be able to survive and remain um, functional for many, many years to come. So that's why we like our concrete structures. They have great thermal properties. They don't burn. They're strong, um, and they have great life cycle analysis, right? So what we do is we say, so concrete is interesting. It is one of the most wonderful and largely abundant materials on the planet, but Cement is a problem. It's a problem for global emissions. So what we do is we reduce our cement. Those are the steps we could take now. I mean, ultimately the goal would be to replace the cement in your concrete. And we hope to get there. But in the meantime, we have to start taking steps. And that's what scope four is all about. It's about making good decisions around how you approach the work, about how you design the work, about how you decide what products are gonna go into your work and about what kinds of technologies can help us in this journey. So what I want to do is I want to demystify it. I think a lot of people think scope four is like this marketing thing that makes you look feel and fluffy and it's amazing. And look at me, I'm using all these virtual tools. You know, I got a Tesla on the road, but it's, it's much more thoughtful and, and a lot more methodical. So what I want to do is obviously scope one, two, and three are important. We've discussed those in the past, um, but scope four is fascinating because it in some ways forces you to think about every aspect of how you build a, a facility, everything from cement to roofing systems to uh, you know air handlers, condensers, and, and everything in between. Um, and, and I think that's a really special approach. Obviously, it, it does overlap, right? We talked about the whole Venn diagram between yeah. scope one, two, yeah. three, but four requires a much more conscious process to make sure that everything you put in here isn't just sustainable today. Yeah. And it also, like I said, it's that behavioral change, right? So one of the things that we like to look at is offsite manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I've been into modern methods of construction for many years. I would love to better figure out how to normalize offsite manufacturing in our industry. Number one, it's safer. It has better quality. You can do more with less. And as you know, skilled trades are out of shortage, right? It allows for more diversity because it's, it's, a, it's in a controlled environment where you can have regular work hours. Offsite manufacturing has all these benefits. It's also more sustainable. 
It's also more sustainable because, again, the controlled environments allow us to think about how we're putting the parts and pieces together. And then if you take the example of like our plenums, instead of taking two months with a crew of 20, it takes five days with a crew of 10, right? To erect all of the plenums. So you look at there's less vehicles on the road, so there's less hours to, of work, there's, um, you know, there's, all, there's less waste, right? All of these benefits that come around the approach. And I do think that the means and methods on how we go about our work are, are very, many, very many times overlooked. I have a really cool, cool interesting um, uh, follow-up question here I want to ask you, because as you're talking about this, how do you think scope four incentivizes the right behavior? So, I mean, I, I think it incentivizes the right behavior because just like I was saying with the modern methods of construction, it's the efficiency, it's the tool time, right? So what it does is it lets us make good decisions, which then makes us more efficient and more innovative. And, um, and like I said, in, in all longevity, gives us a better product in the end. So it goes hand in hand with us trying to improve the industry and it goes hand in hand with the business case. So that's where it naturally will start changing the behavior when you start realizing if I put a batch plant on my site and I avoid all the trucks going back and forth to a batch plant, thousands of trucks, and the roads don't get tore up with these big heavy diesel trucks and we're not running these diesel trucks back and forth, and then you realize I have better control over my product, my yield is better, my waste is down, and I have better quality. And all of these things start happening. And I, it's less expensive because I'm reducing my cement by using technology. All of these things become a business case and then that's how you normalize it in the business, right? I think that's fascinating. So like we've been talking about before, I wanna leave people with a little bit of a golden nugget, a seed to plant, a thought to think about a little bit later. Um, while some might think scope four is a marketing term that you know we like to throw around just to input another number, um, what I want people to take away from this is that you talk about technology. All these blinking lights, these amazing things are going to be in this hallway, but it's not just about IP addresses and blinking lights, is it? It's about the technology that puts this in, this roof in, the numbers and statistics. So what I'd love to hear from you is what should people out there that obviously are focusing on greenhouse gas emissions, scope, focusing on scope one, two, and three, how do they approach scope four? How do they think about it from that methods and process and perspective? And not only how do they approach it from like a, like a meaningful and an actionable perspective? Well, so we have a tendency in the data center world to think about what's inside the building more than what's outside the building or the actual delivery of the building, yeah. right? We just have a tendency because this is really where the, you know, the, the meat is, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is where we make our money. But think about it. If you really do focus on those four categories I talked about, um, you end up having a more future-proof facility, right? So technology is very exponential. That curve is just like that, right? Mm -hmm. So as the curve changes and we have to adapt to have more density or different aspects, looking at the way that you use this space and the way that you can plug and play with a kit of parts, with off-site manufacturing, with the ways that we do means and methods, with the products that last longer, with the products that have better function when it comes to heat transfer and things like that. If you really start thinking about that use case and the physical structure, then you'll understand the benefit it has for what's inside this space, right? And the future of what's going to be inside this space. Wow, I love that, Nancy. So the concept of scope four and understanding these greenhouse emissions is to, I don't wanna say force, it's a very strong word, but really push us to think differently about technology, not just what goes in the building, but what brings the building up. If we knew now, or we knew back 25 years ago what we know now, what would we have done differently? Yeah. Let's just think about that, right? So that's kind of where we're at. Like, let's start thinking ahead, look at that future proofing, and understand that the built environment has a lot to do with how we deliver what the world needs. I think that's extraordinary, Nancy, and thank you for defining that and understanding scope four a little bit better. I, I feel like we put some, some, some meat on the bones of this important topic. Um, and I think for everyone listening, it's, it's, a, it's a reflective approach.